Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're talking Alluvium again, and this time the sort of economics behind the game, because it's something for me personally, coming from the mobile gaming space into the crypto gaming space, the whole economics, especially of this game, is just crazy once you start to understand it and what it actually provides for players and stuff like that. So I wanted to give a bit of a visual representation as best I can to how it works for those that aren't sure, because especially if you're coming from outside of the gaming space, but especially if just not even in Alluvium, because it's very different to things like Axie and stuff like that. So let's get into it. Okay, so we're back here on paint. I'm gonna do my best to explain it with some visuals and stuff like that as well to show you guys like how the actual system works and where the money flows to because the money pretty much just all flows back into the game, which is really, really interesting. So uh, basically here, let's do a big circle. Uh, this can be like in game. So this, this can be the game basically. Uh, let's spell game like that that's perfect um and in the game you can make purchases on certain things for instance uh the first one you can do is to cure shards to be able to catch alluvials hence the pokeball um there's healing up so there's going to be like potions and stuff like that that you can um use there's going to be travel so being able to go into zones you can pay for the travel that is meant to be a wing yes it is uh and then we also have land sales so that's my image of a land so all those things um are going to be like game Game revenue and what happens with those game revenues is they get put over into a vault um, and that vault um, if we go ahead and draw where that stuff goes to that goes into this vault now with these purchases uh, they will be made through ethereum or um, silv I'm pretty sure they're gonna be tethered to a, a dollar amount not that it's not like it's gonna be like 0 0.005 ethereum to do that and then ethereum goes cost goes up and it gets more expensive I think they're gonna tie it to a dollar amount um, and that's how they're gonna organize that don't quote me on anything yeah you can try to but uh, you know I think that's how it's gonna work. Uh, so then we do have this vault. So this vault is where all that money goes into. And what this vault does is periodically is gonna buy off of the market. Let's use like uh, this as being um, like the coin exchange. So this is pretty much, you know, your, your um, crypto market. It's gonna buy ILV tokens from here. So this is where it's gonna buy ILV um, it's going to use these funds from the game to go ahead and purchase these with whatever money it's got in there. And it's going to do it like it'll be algorithmic. It'll buy it at a certain stage um, of the day or whenever. And then it's going to use whatever it's purchased there as rewards for people who are staking. So we have in here, let's just draw, I'm using different shapes just to make it look interesting. But we do have staking. Now, if you guys do want me to do a bit of a video on staking, because it is a topic in its own I can happily do that as well and give like a basic overview so you can get a simplistic understanding of how it actually functions um, and what it does is you've got people staking so for instance me I'm staked in a liquidity pool which I'll talk about the liquidity in a minute but um, I'm staked and because anyone who is staked will be then available for revenue distribution which this ILV that they get here is used for revenue distribution um, so what's going to happen is after it buys this any Anyone who is staking is going to get a share of this ILV. So that's normally going to be players or investors. But I mean, you can stake with just about any amount. I'm pretty sure there's no limit on it. It's just, you know, gas fees kind of suck. So you don't want to do nothing. Um, but you're going to get that money. So basically, we have the players over here. The players spend the money in the game which then goes to the vault, which then buys the token from the market, which then goes back to the players who are staking the coin. Now, it's a bit more complex than that. We do also have the um, the in-game market. So we've got the, uh, my head's covering that. Let's put it up there. That'll do there. Okay, so we have the in-game market. So this is I-G-M. That'll do. Um, and this is where people are going to sell their alluvials uh, for cash, pretty much, or for Ethereum. Um, and you're going to be buying alluvials off other people. Now, the seller, the way this works is um, the seller is going to get 94%. I'm pretty sure these are the figures. It's, it's very close to this if it's not. They're going to get 94% um, to the seller. Then 1% is going to go to Immutable X for obviously using their whole system to do it. And then 4% of this 
is also, so that 4% is basically just following this and going into that vault. So not only do you have the purchases made in game, you also have 4% of the sales that happen on the market going into here. Once again, funneling back into the staking, which the staking is pretty much, yes, you'll have some people just investing for it, but it's gonna be the players. So that is the very interesting thing. Now, on top of staking, there's a lot of different stuff um, involved in this but this is the basic model once you get into the game now we do have things like a liquidity pool um which is a set, a set of tokens set aside which is for liquidity um farming which is basically some, the early staking funds um but that's a separate thing in its own i don't want to go too deep into that i'll probably go into that if we do do a um a staking video now on top of that we do have the treasury so i wanted to add the treasury in there as well um, so the treasury and all this is controlled by the governance system of having you know, basically players or people that hold the token, um, which I think most players will end up at least getting a, a some of the token. Don't know. Don't quote me. But people who have the token can put forth ideas for changes um, and then the council members can vote for those changes and the council members are voted in every three months. So it's a, it's a completely community driven thing. The developers don't ha don't control this, which is the really crazy thing coming from other games. But we do have this treasury here. Um, so this treasury um, has funds that it's used to, you know, that, that's at the discretion of the people basically to choose where it goes. It can be used to pay the development team and all that sort of stuff. The thing I like about this is um, compared to traditional games, it's not going to be like the developers just go, okay, I'm putting, you know, 90% of that stuff in my pocket. We'll use a little bit for development and stuff like that. But the treasury can use this to do pretty much whatever they want um, to sort of help out the game. I just realized the line doesn't show. Let's make that a box. Um, they can use, use it for whatever they want. They can... Um, adjust it they can choose maybe we put some aside for extra competitions and all that stuff which for competitions there is another set section of tokens allowed for that but it allows to you know keep cycling through now the thing about the treasury is the treasury how do they continue to get funds because they got this set of tokens but everything goes into the vault which goes back to the stakers and that is the system well the treasury is actually staking so the treasury is going to generate its income because it stakes what it has and then it gets a portion of this ilv that is bought out by the vault so that is how the treasury will continue to run as well. So you've got this really interesting system that just seems to just completely revolve around. And it's not like, like I mentioned at the start, something like Axie where um, in Axie you need new players. Obviously they say they're going to change things. So I, I don't know, but at the moment it's very much, you need new players coming in to buy things off other players for there to be a demand. But with this type of system, you've got in-game stuff that's, you know, enticing to players to buy. You've got a low level of entry, which is being free. And then these will be probably cheap purchases to start exploring. So you've got the players that are playing to have fun, spending money, that money goes into to the vault and then you've also got players who've maybe you know some dude's got a t tier zero that they've leveled up and they're trying to sell it to make a little bit of profit so they can then buy something from in-game and four percent of all sales and you gotta remember some of these sales might end up getting pretty big if you get like holographic tier five ram fires and stuff like that might have big dollar amounts so the seller is going to pay a fee of four percent which is then also going to go into the vault and then all of that stuff from all the purchases in the game in the vault instead of going directly into the pocket of the developers it goes back and then they use it to buy off of the market which is going to stabilize the coin and make the coin a theoretically more stable investment because it adds security to it because there's that much getting bought all the time and then that is going to be distributed back Back to the stakers um, who are the players but also a little bit into the treasury to maintain the game so it's this really nice circle of economics that just makes sense and the thing I really love about this game and I'm really looking forward to it is like it's it's a genuine economy where it's like I've made a whole video about making money in the game free to play, but it really excites me that it's like what you have is instead of players coming in to spend money and buying you know the alluvials off of the developer who just makes, you know, says, okay, buy this pack, which is what happens in mobile games a lot. You've got players who don't have the money grinding it out and playing the game and hopefully enjoying doing what they're doing and then selling that to the other players who have the money. So it's a, it's a whole, it's a whole system that just like runs itself 
without devs going, okay, drop this in, take the money out, drop this in, take the money out. It all stays in and goes around. And that's what I'm really excited about for this game. I think it's just got one of the best models that I've seen from all of the crypto games that I've looked at so far. And uh, I mean, the staking rewards are pretty good as well. Um, and like staking at the moment is just coming out of liquidity, which I haven't really gone into at the moment. But once we do start getting purchases happening, that's when this um, revenue distribution part of it starts kicking in. But yeah, like I said, I could have gone a bit more in depth with um, the way staking works at the moment, but I'll do that in a separate staking video. I figure it was getting a bit complicated on screen as it is. But anyway, guys, that is the Alluvium economy. Let me know what you think, because like I said, I think it's a really good economy and I think it has a great chance for success. Um, you you know just waiting to see that game trailer to make sure the game's good they might just come out with some 2d pixel art and be like ha jokes on you Th they won't but uh anyway guys that is gonna be it for this one thanks for watching hope you have an awesome day and i'll look forward to seeing the next one cheers